Hello everyone, I'm Yahya Bayramolo. I'm working as an Android engineer at Uber, and today I'll be talking about independent features powered by Dagger extensions. Uh, knowing that it's very difficult to focus on the virtual conference, uh, I decided to start with a live demo. So I hope it gets you a little bit more excited about what we are gonna be building, and you can see uh, what we're gonna have at the end of the talk. So I'm gonna quickly switch to Android Studio and show you the demo that I will be building here. Um, so we have an application, a very simple structure. It has a base as the lower layer. It has feature one, a feature two modules on top of the base. And then we have the app as a higher level of um, a module structure. And on the app, we define obviously all of those projects as an implementation. And uh, when you launch, you have this uh, sample application as shown on the emulator. It's a feature one, feature two, you click on it, very simple. I didn't really pay attention on the content. Uh, the important part that I'm gonna be talking about is the setup itself. So let's say uh, you build the application and high level features, one of them are not performing um, as great as the others and uh, a product decided to terminate it. Or um, let's say it, it goes very, very well so that product wanted to have that extracted as a separate application. Um, so what you want to do is you want to remove that module and just compile so that your application is ready without that feature immediately, right? Um, but most of the time, what you cannot do is just remove from the compilation because then you have all these places in the code, those the feature are bounded together and you need to go there, make sure that the importers are removed, the binding parts are cleaned and so on. So I'm gonna show how this, this can be done by using Dagger extensions. And uh, we will see at the end um, how easy to remove or add a new feature to your application. So I'm gonna quickly um, close this both so that we can have not disrupted. All right. So, Starting with why independent features? Why would you want to build independent features, right? First of all, uh, from the technical aspect, you want to have a clear separation among your features. You want to make sure that features are isolated so that you can actually use it uh, whenever that is required and you can just add, remove um, as well. So this clear separation from technical perspective will give you also uh, a better understanding uh, where the feature starts, where it ends, and uh, all the contained dependencies being um, encapsulated into the feature itself. So this will also force you to put more thoughts during development because then you would have to know where you can access, where you cannot access, and what, what are your APIs that you wanna expose publicly and what are the things that is only used internally uh, in the feature and so on. And by having this clear separation and ab abstraction in mind that you will have a less entangled code because you won't be able to access to the other features code, right? So if it is in one uh, module, if it is easy to access, then someone will access it, especially if you are working in a, uh, in application with multiple people. Um, so that that would mean that having this uh, compile time restrictions will actually force you to have um, better structured code and less entangled code base. From the practical aspect, it is also about the ownership. So if you have your feature completely defined separately and independent, and uh, you can define the ownership for the feature and you can make sure that whatever goes wrong or who, uh, if something needs to be updated or if there is any issues going on and so on, you know who to talk to or if you need to make a change, you know who to talk to. And you can also automate this kind of uh, things if, there's, if there needs to be an alert raised and so on. 
It is also easy to reuse. If consider that you have multiple applications and you want to share some of the features, you can just move from one to another or just copy uh, the complete uh, build um, implementation and you're basically done. It is as you, it can provide you an isolated build as in if you are working in a big uh, project, you don't want to build the entire application all the time while you're day-to-day -day working. Uh, what you can do, you can build a shell application as I showed, and then you can enable your own feature while you're developing uh, so that you can just keep developing without waiting the other features to be compiled as well. Um, this is very useful, especially if you're working in a big uh, project and uh, you don't wanna wait for the build time. So while we go towards to that uh, at the end, I wanna show, I wanna first analyze how the feature dependency is structured in general, right? So you have an application and there are some dependencies defined in the application lifecycle that you wanna have them for as a single instance for entire application, or you wanna have them kind of uh, registered during the application on create and so on, right? And then you have a feature which receives some of those dependencies as an input. For example, um, okay, HTTP client, or for example, a map provider, if you have different map providers. And then this feature will have self-maintained dependencies. So it will create some dependencies, use those dependencies and so on, right? And the third one, which is one of the most interesting part that the feature will want to have some dependencies to have an application lifecycle or to be registered during application on create, which where the challenge uh, begins. So we'll see now how we can have all of those uh, built in Dagger setup. Which brings us the problem. Uh, why am I even talking about this, right? Why, what is the problem for that? So I, I, I'm gonna assume that you are familiar with Dagger and um, this would basically your application component that you would define on the application uh, and you would have it once per entire application lifecycle so that you can maintain um, the dependencies for it. You annotate with an application scope, you have the component, you define the modules. Here with Dagger, or, uh, Dagger 2, you have to provide all the dependencies, uh, all the modules statically here, right? Saying that, okay, this component will need network module, Firebase module, map provider module, global API module, and also some dependencies provided from feature one related module and some from feature two module, right? And the problem is here because as long as I have some dependencies hard coded here from certain modules, uh, Gradle modules, I cannot uh, remove from the compilation, right? The moment I remove it from compilation, um, compiler will tell me, hey, I cannot find the import. Hey, I cannot find this uh, only feature one related module class. What are you talking about? And everything's gonna become red and you won't be able to uh, build anymore. And you have to go clean all those uh, binding parts. So if we would have some option on Dagger 2 saying that, hey, these are your modules that I know that you will have it and define as a static and then have some alternative for the models that you cannot define statically as a dynamic key, for example, and then say, hey, Dagger, you know what? Find all the models that, that specifies this one of these keys and then use them as your module as well. Uh, so this was uh, a feature request that I made it like three years ago. It didn't get accepted because uh, apparently Dagger 2 wasn't supposed to do that. But yeah, since as spoiled, <laughs> um, now with Dagger extensions, uh, we don't need Dagger to do it for us. We can um, fake it until Dagger make it. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is by using Dagger extensions, uh, we will generate the code 
uh, for Dagger to see. And then Dagger will generate the code from what it sees. So why am I talking, why am I gonna talk today about Anvil and Hilt? It is not because they're from Google and Square, really appreciate it, but it is more about that's what they bring to the table, which is an inversion of the relation between component and module. So what was happening in Dagger 2 that a component defines what modules to use, while with Anvil and Hilt, modules can define which component to be used from. So it's, it's basically a dependency inversion for Dagger. Um, <laughs> all right, let's start doing our setup. I'm gonna start with Anvil and we're gonna build uh, the entire setup that will allow us to do as I showed on the live demo. And then with Un uh, after Anvil, we're gonna move to Hilt and do the same for it. Meanwhile, we'll see the differences on the way. So with Anvil, we have this setup, as I mentioned, we have a base feature one and application, and they are depending uh, from application depends feature one, feature one depends base. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna define shared scopes and shared abstractions on base so that every feature and application can depend on those to do the binding, basically. On feature one, we're gonna define feature scope and component, and we're gonna create a module to contribute to application component. On the application level, we're gonna have a create, uh, we're gonna create an application component. Um, there's a little uh, red asterisk there because this is an important point, I think. The application component uh, needs to be aware of all the modules that is gonna contribute to it. That means the application component needs to be in a level that is on top of every other modules which we'll be contributing to. So there is actually no technical limitation to move application component to base. But if you do that, it won't have access to the model that feature one provides. So the generated code will not have those dependencies in it. So that's why it needs to be on top. And whenever application compiles, it will know that feature one as a dependency for this module, and it will collect all the modules from it to create the application component with it. And then we're gonna have the binding for the components. Uh, as you see that I'm gonna define a new scope and component for each feature because I'm gonna be using a component dependency rather than subcomponents. Uh, considering this concept is a very high level feature abstraction, I would like to have a complete separation between the components and make sure that they define their dependencies explicitly. So moving forward, I'm gonna show this um, square and on the right bottom corner, you will see in which level we are. So starting on base, we're gonna have, as I mentioned, certain dependency, certain scopes being defined, which is here, we're gonna define an application scope. Uh, for Unreal, you don't have to use annotation as a scope key. Uh, I'm gonna do it. Uh, just because I wanna also mark some dependencies with that and make sure that Dagger is also using respective scopes for it. We're gonna define an abstraction here as feature dependency provider. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna use a component dependency. So we need to make sure that we can provide certain dependencies from a parent component to child component. So this is gonna be our um, abstraction in between. And we're gonna define a data class called feature with the title and deep link host. Uh, since they are high level features, I think the deep link navigation here is efficient enough, sufficient enough. Um, and we're gonna define an application plugin abstraction to um, allow any dependencies that needs to be initialized during application on create. 
um, being initialized without actually statically typing that in the application. So how is how are we gonna do that? We're gonna have a module in the base, which uh, you can see the first annotation is contribute to. It is coming from Anvil. It defines which um, component that it will contribute to by using the key. So here it is important that what you are giving um, to as a contributes to, it's not the component itself, but it's a key. It is called scope on Anvil. Uh, you're giving the type as uh, an abstraction between module and component as well. So we're gonna use application scope for it. So we say, okay, base model contributes to application scope and with whatever component uses that scope will have this model injected to it. Um, so we're gonna use also some multi-binding to make sure this abstraction will allow us to be able to isolate the dependencies that we are passing. And we're gonna have a set of feature and set of application plugin. The reason we are providing empty set here is because even if I remove all the features from compilation, it will still compile, but it won't have any content, basically. All right, um, the next we are moving up to a feature one level. Here, we're gonna define our scope, which is a feature one scope. And then we're gonna define our dependencies. In feature one dependencies, I wanna have a, some shared dependency, maybe a logger apparently. And then I wanna have a dependency with an app lifecycle. So these are my external dependencies. These are the dependencies that feature one needs to be able to work with. And I add the contributes to annotation again. So this will go and extend the component with given this dependency so that we can get that from it. And on while you create the feature one component, you have uh, you annotate it with feature one scope and you add the merge component annotation with the scope as a key here, feature one scope. And then you define dependencies as feature one dependencies. So again, we are not here defining uh, dependencies as a direct component or we are not telling what is its parent component directly, but we are using an abstraction in between two. We come to the point that now we have to provide some dependencies from feature to application. So far was uh, straightforward because all the setup we did was within the given uh, modules, but now we are gonna be doing intermodal uh, interaction. So if we have the feature one module to application, very descriptive name, I like it, uh, contributes the application scope again. So what we're gonna provide here is a feature instance with the title and the dippling host and an application plugin. Let's say I have a dependency that needs to be initialized during application, and then I wanna use it later on somewhere that has a static access. Uh, you can think of like, um, if you have a Picasso, you wanna create the Picasso instance on application create, and then you wanna access Picasso later on. Uh, well, it is done by, anyway. Um, so now if we would, this is another important thing. Uh, now let's say uh, I wanna create a dependency and have that dependency single instance and for entire application lifecycle. So I provide it here in the same model as well, but now I annotate it with application scope to ensure that this will have this uh, single instance within given scope, right? And if you remember, this dependency was an external dependency for feature one. Even though I'm defining that how to create it, I will receive it from the parent component because this model is actually not belong to feature one. It will be injected into parent component, right? All right, so moving to application level, now we're gonna use all those things that we've provided and build our application. 
application component interface, you have the application scope annotation, and you have the merge component annotation, which is also coming from Anvil, as I mentioned. Uh, it will merge all the contributes to annotation annotated uh, classes into this component with the key of application scope. So whoever, def so far, whatever we define as contributes to application scope will be merged into this component. And if we look at the generated code, Anvil will generate uh, this. So Anvil is a Kotlin compiler uh, plugin. So you won't be able to find this uh, in a generated code because it won't exist. Um, it will, you can find it though as a temp here in the build temp cap tree stops. Um, it is not as pretty as I show here. I just had to clean up a little bit, but it's a very uh, verbose uh, and boilerplate code around it. Regardless, um, for the simplicity, I just cleaned up for you. Here, what we're gonna have is application component interface is annotated with application scope annotation and a component which has the modules that are coming from different Gradle modules, right? So we define feature one module to application, we define base module and feature two, whatever. And these were all have annotated with contributes to application scope, so they are all ended up here. And then if you see the application component also extends feature one dependencies, feature two dependencies. So all the external dependencies that we annotated with contributes to are now an extension of this component. So we can pass this component as a parent to those components. And Dagger will generate uh, from this point on whatever it needs to generate. So in the application now, we have, we create the application component, um, we pass the application instance, and then we inject the set of application plugins and we make sure that we iterate and make sure that each plugin point, application plugin is um, applied. So every uh, dependency that was passed through an application plugin is now initialized on the application crate. And now we can make the application implement feature dependency provider. And through the dependencies method, whoever asks for any dependency, we can pass back to application component and say, hey, you know what? This is actually the type that you're looking for because we know that if you annotate it with contributes to, it will be extending. And in case it doesn't, then we tell, hey, you forgot to annotate it. Uh, make sure that you contribute to application scope. This is the only uh, static, uh, this is the only runtime check that we have, uh, unfortunately. Um, I think Hilt does something similar under the hood, but because uh, Hilt comes with all the setup during compilation, uh, it also validates. So if you if you check the antipoints.get, it has a similar code, uh, but it won't have um, runtime failure because of uh, the generated code is already validated. All right, speaking of Hilt, uh, we're going to move to Hilt. So far, what I've all shown that will give you um, the setup with how you can have the application with separated independent features. So you can basically, from that point on, remove and add any feature, which will contribute some dependencies to application, some dependencies to itself. So how this setup will look like with Hilt, considering that Hilt already comes with a lot of uh, setup, um, opinionated setup. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show everything that we did with Anvil and I'm gonna remove the ones that we don't need for Hilt. So in Anvil, we had to define shared scopes. Uh, for Hilt, we don't need them because they're already defined. And for Anvil, we define feature scope and components. We won't do that for Hilt because Hilt has uh, a different setup for components. You have the application, activity, fragment, view components, and so on. You can, in theory, define an entry point for feature and use that for uh, creating component dependencies or like subcomponents again. 
But um, if you're using Hilt, just use the way that is being promoted, I would say. And on application, we won't need application component, we won't need binding for components, but we will have Hilt Android app annotation on the app. As I mentioned, this needs to be on top. Uh, you can again put this in the base, but it won't work because it won't know what are the models that it needs to generate from. So uh, whatever the application that you're annotating with Hilt Android app needs to be the highest uh, level uh, module, gradient module. Well, unless you're using dynamic models, dynamic features, which is another subject. All right, moving on uh, again, on the base level, we had this scope, uh, application scope, we don't need it anymore. We had this feature dependency provider, we don't need it anymore as an abstraction because Hilt already, as I mentioned, comes with a certain setup of components and knows how to create a component from another one. So it uses the subcomponents under the hood and it will manage all the required dependencies being passed to each other. We will keep the feature and application plugin. And here in the base module, there is an, uh, instead of contributes to, now you have an install in annotation. Uh, a slight difference here, as you can see that you're defining install in with directly saying which component that it will contribute to, right? Um, in my opinion, what uh, Anvil has a little bit more flexible than what Hilt does, because if you're defining a new entry point and component, and all the modules that you're gonna be providing needs to have access to it. So it, it is not as flexible as Unwill that you can define a key uh, scope uh, and then make, you can just contribute in from any other modules, uh, Gradle modules to that uh, as you can just do it. All right, um, so we still have the set of feature and set of application plugin. And we, we, if we move to feature one layer, now we have the installing application component again. We provide the feature, we provide the application plugin, we provide the dependency with a app lifecycle, uh, but now we're gonna annotate with singleton instead of application scope because we didn't define separate scopes. Also, we didn't have to define this as a dependency coming from parent component or whatsoever because Hilt will create subcomponents, so you will get it anyway. All right, moving to application layer. Now in the application, you just annotate it with Hilt Android app. You inject the set of application plugin and on create for each you again apply. So make sure that every dependency that is passed through the plugin are initialized during the app on create. That is basically it. I just wanna make sure that um, the whole idea that I'm trying to explain here is all to give a perspective, a new perspective um, that comes with Dagger extensions. So with these extensions, basically you can, act, you can have a separate level of abstraction and build a better um, structured application. So make sure that you can um, decouple more than previously and uh, even maybe have it used for um, to reduce the compilation time for your feature day-to-day -day work. Uh, and also you can have this to reuse the features without actually having to um, move code around, just make sure just by uh, adding one line onto a compilation and so on. Um, what I showed was a very high level uh, feature uh, abstraction but you can apply this as granular as you want to. It doesn't have to be only, if, you if your app has five feature, you don't have to do it only for five um, modules. You can also break them down further, but it's up to you. Just make sure that uh, you don't loosen uh, too much, then it will be difficult to figure out where is, where is coming from what, what is coming from where. All right. Thank you. I uh, just want to also share a few links for you. Uh, if you're interested in subject model, this subject, modularization and independent features. I gave a talk last year about modularized in structure where I'm talking mostly about 
what are the dependency structures uh, that you can use, how you can make sure that the features are not depending on each other and so on. And also navigation. Um, I also gave a talk two years ago, again, in Mobile Optimized, um, was about building features by independent dagger components, which is the same subject, but it was not possible without using dagger extensions. So it tries to find an alternative approach without using the extensions and explains how far you can go for. And about the application plugin implementation that I showed, if you want to read it, there is a blog post that I wrote a few years ago, how you can use it, how you can benefit to provide different plugins through different build types. And the last but, uh, last but not least is the GitHub repo for the sample application I showed. Um, you can find it there. It has three branches. Uh, master has uh, the code from the build features by independent dagger components, so without extensions. And there is two, two other branches for Hilt and Anvil uh, implementations. So you can check that out too. That will be all. Thank you. And I think now we can take the questions if you have. <laughs>